samyama of concentration, meditation, absorption, or samyama, dharana, dhyan, samadhi. Anything you do in life, this is the key to success, the key to achievement, the key to manifestation, the key to anything. Any area we want to have integration, integrity, to be part of our being, requires these three. Meditation is not something we do. This is very important rule of a thumb understanding. Meditation is not something we do. Meditation, maybe how it is now in English language and many other languages with, that are, let's say, spoken in this part of the world, German, Swiss, Italian, right? Polish, French, Spanish, what have you. The term meditation may have many different connotations. But meditation, at its essence, and how it has been, let's say, emphatically brought to the Western culture from the Orient in the last around 150 years, more or less, and more emphatically through the, the time of the counterculture of the 60s, when many big spiritual teachings made them march on the West, as it were. The meditation in Indian subcontinent has the term dhyana, dhyana, dhyan. And the term meditation here is, comprises, classically speaking, of one of the eight limbs of yoga. One of the eight limbs, one of the eight, let's say, sometimes spoken as stages, sometimes spoken as of limbs. Limbs is better because they are no, they're not stages. If we are to speak about the stages, then meditation is comprised of three stages. Three stages. In Sanskrit they are known as dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Dharana stands for concentration, Dhyana for a flow, flow of awareness towards an object of meditation, and Samadhi, integration, absorption. So if you pick the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, you would definitely come across this crystal clearly explained that what meditation in essence is. And what's even more important, this is where we can cover some grounds from get going, that the importance of the three in one. They are known as three in one, together, samyama, together. They come together. They always come together. Concentration, flow of awareness towards something, integration or absorption. Always these three. Moreover, whatever we do in life requires these three. Whatever you want to put your attention on and succeed, these three are in place. So meditation is not different. The art of meditation, the practice of meditation is squarely here, rests on this very, very way consciousness functions. Consciousness here functions as a wave. First is the wave of Attention, isn't it? Anything we do, some attention needs to be funneled into what we're doing. No? Anything. Anything. Pouring yourself a glass of water. It maybe takes minimum attention, but some attention is required. Let alone tuning musical instrument, let alone going on stage and hitting that. Note, hitting that. All requires attention. That is the harana, concentration. That met 
it spontaneously translates into the next phase known as dhyana or uninterrupted flow. Once we funneled our attention on something, it creates a wave-like, flow-like stream of awareness. And that is the meditation portion. But it is not for the sake or for its own sake. It leads to a state of integration for which we have the term samadhi or absorption. Samadhi. You see? But they always come together, always together. This dharana, that samyama, samyama of concentration, meditation, absorption. Or samyama, dharana, dhyan, samadhi. Anything you do in life, this is the key to success, the key to achievement, the key to manifestation, the key to anything. Any area we want to have integration, integrity, to be part of our being, requires these three. Anything. Professional enterprise, succeeding in the world, relationship above all else, anything. Whatever we are interested in requires this. So spiritual enterprise is not different. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe all this various activities is, in fact, a replica of how fun consciousness functions in the first place here. The importance of that experience, the importance of that three-in-one, attention funneled, stream is created, leads to absorption. The Kashmiri sages speak about it in terms of theater. Dancer comes on stage, performs the act, and when upon the act being performed, she's off the stage. And all this for the sake of the enjoyment of Shiva. So this is how, let's say, analogy is given, at least by some of the sages of the tradition. Anything we do has that dancer has that moment when she comes on stage, performance, and when she's off the stage. Everything has these three phases, three stages. Attention funneled, created the stream, and stream culminates in state of integrity. So this is the take on meditation. But meditation itself is a natural, spontaneous activity. So the first rule of thumb is to withdraw that doing, doership, I'm doing something. I'm going somewhere. We're not going anywhere. The pretext is created. The situations, the circumstance is simply given chance for it to take place. And then it unfolds. See? So this is a rule of a thumb. We don't do anything. So all that do, doership doing is, has to be, well, renounced, if you will, renounced simply. And then we enjoy the marble of meditation, enjoy the spontaneity, enjoy the, what unfolds on its own. And enjoy is a very important word because we are here to enjoy that process to enjoy it. We're not doing it to suffer. There are other practices where we want to suffer, right? But this is not to suffer. This is to uproot suffering. The purpose of meditation is to eradicate suffering. So it's to connect to that source of joy which boundlessly streams at the very essence of who we are at all times simply because it's beyond time itself. So connecting to that is our job, is our responsibility. Without it, we are, as it were, 
not really rooted in reality. We are rooted in phantasmagoria. We are rooted in whatever gazillion million of activity-based enterprises, hoping that that's what will bring the fulfillment. But without that, where the fulfillment itself comes from, all this is in vain one way or another. And this is one single thing that all perennial traditions agree upon. They may split hair on this or that, how this, how that, but they all agree that the reason why it is called perennial, not subject to time and space, perennial means not subject to circumstances. It is always a pertinent to one truth. And the truth is, is that the source of happiness is always within. And meditation, therefore, becomes a must until it bears fruit fully, until it tangibly falls in one's lap, so tangibly that it is accompanied by all the, that what that represents as a metaphor here. When meditation bears that fruit, then we don't even speak of meditation as spiritual practice anymore. Because we simply live our life at the level where that, what meditation is supposed to take us to, that state of integration, is there at all times. See? Yeah. It, exactly that. It should evoke some positive positive response, exactly, it's, it's that, it's what makes us <laughs> So this is just in a nutshell, so therefore the guidance and everything, methodology, there are many, many methodologies of how that funneling is created, of what the object of meditation is. In a nutshell, we can of course summarize meditations into those meditations that are, let's say, performed with eyes closed, with naturally giving the possibility for the senses to withdraw, and it is a classical approach where that stream of uninterrupted awareness is easier to create because it is not dispersed. And then in turn, within this vein of meditative practices, there are those that are based on something which has to become an object before, before something takes over. Either the process itself takes over, of which we'll speak in a moment, or the integration takes over. So in other words, object dissolves. For example, if you are given mantra for meditation, as some of you no doubt have at some point maybe received mantra or read it in a book, right, have been taught mantra, you use that mantra as an object of your meditation. But that mantra is a tool. It's not goal to hold on to. So very often meditators ask what to do if the mantra begins to disappear, fizzle away. Do I try to catch it? Do I try to memorize it? Do I try to... No. That's the whole point. It serves the purpose. You see? It serves the purpose. It's that part which helps to launch you into stratosphere of your own beingness. And it is dislodged and serves the purpose. It's no longer needed. It was the fuel part. A fueling part. And meditations that are based on, again here, functioning of the body. And this is what we utilize in our workshops as bread and butter. In this case, breath. So the focal point of our attention is breath as that entrance point, which helps to funnel funnel awareness 
in a certain way, in a certain place. And of course, it's very, very intricate because the breath itself, the breath, physical breath even, is an expression of consciousness as prana, as that life force, at the level of physical functioning. As we know, we can go without this or that for whatever number of hours or days, without water, what is it, 48 hours, I don't know. Without food, I don't know how many days. That is exactly each to their own, maybe, I don't know. Couple of weeks, it will feed on its own, body will feed on its own tissues, it will consume its own flesh. But we can't be without breath for more than a couple minutes. It's a fact. No? Even the most skilled divers know what they play with, the, the danger. The most skilled divers who hold their breath for as long as, well, you know what it is like f to hold breath up to three minutes and then just few more seconds. No, cannot. So you see, the breath is truly, truly linked to our vitality. So therefore, it's obvious we work with breath because it's the most immediate expression, the most intimate expression of the vital force. And we use it as that point of attention. And like with the mantra, when it serves the point, point and of entry, when it created the wave, there is no need to hold on to that. We can go back to it at any time. But we don't need to keep holding our awareness arrested at the level of observing or watching the breathing. At some point it goes and either spontaneity takes over or integration takes over. And that integration then, there's no need to have awareness on anything. It then works from a completely different level. It's no longer subject to where we place the attention. Is that clear? Okay, let's finalize this with one beautiful analogy from the Vedas. There's a part in, Ved in Vedic sciences known as Dhanur Veda. Dhanur Veda. Dhanur Veda, literally translated, means the art of archery. Dhanur is the, the bow and the arrows. It's the art of archery. The art of archery is comprised of what? You tell me. Comprised of what? Tell me, tell me the target. Point to the target. That's all, isn't it? Target. Tell me where the post is. That's all. That's all the archer wants to know. Where is it? The flying bird, steel target, here, there, doesn't matter. Then stretching the bow and letting the arrow go. This is what we just spoke about, exemplified beautifully through that analogy of archery. The art of archery is that. Aim, stretch, release. That's all. Aim, stretch, Release, that's all. You understand that? You will understand why it's, it's, it's called Dhanur Veda. Anything we do in life, if we are good archers, we always achieve our objectives because it's unfallible. Yes, we can place the wrong target. We can go after wrong things in life. That's another story. Or our hands are not steady. Or we somehow impaired in our vision or whatever. But great archers shoot blindfolded. We know that. Great archers don't need to see the target. Tell me the target. Okay? And the shot is being done by seeing it internally. The art here is in stretching the bow and releasing it. Releasing is this of tremendous importance. See? Because the propensity in all of us is always to hold on 
holding on to whatever we are there holding on to. And meditation is effectively speaking, my dear, beautiful friends, is about letting go. That's all. So that's what release here is. Whatever that target, aim, power of stretch, then everything is in release. In release where that is, the goal is hit. The goal of meditation, likewise, the goal of life. So, letting go, releasing, allows the arrow to hit the target.